Hi, this is Don Gooding with the Four Colors of Money for Entrepreneurs. In this video, I'm going to talk about structuring the investment in your company. The objective of this session is to help you to understand the difference, the basic differences between preferred shares and convertible notes. And most importantly, to help you understand which of these investment structures is right for your company right now. So I will be focusing on the most common investment structures, i.e. preferred shares and convertible notes, although from time to time I will be referring to the fact that there are some alternative structures used for equity investment. Until about 20 years ago, preferred shares were really the only option for structuring a major new equity investment into high potential companies. There were bridge loans, a type of debt that were used to help companies when they were running out of cash and they needed their existing investors to sustain them, to build a bridge to the next round of preferred shares. But uh, typically those weren't used to bring in new investors and they certainly weren't something that companies were planning to use as part of a major financing. But preferred shares have their issues, especially for young companies. And so convertible notes started to emerge about 20 years ago. And now uh, I think it's safe to say they are the dominant form of equity investment into very young companies. Uh, both in the major tech centers and in other geographies as well. But convertible notes do have their issues, and I'll talk about those issues in a little bit. And so in the last five or so years, there are some now new alternative structures for investing into very young companies. And then at the other end of the, the stage, for later stage companies, there are actually some other alternatives, especially for companies that aren't necessarily on the unicorn trajectory. And I'm going to highlight revenue sharing in particular for those kind of companies. Let's first talk about preferred shares, which are the dominant structure for equity investment in high growth potential companies. First of all, they are ownership in your corporation, unlike debt or grants. Second, preferred shares have a whole set of rights and terms that make them preferred by investors over your common shares. There are so many of these terms that in fact, I have a whole series of videos to talk about those. The third thing is that preferred shares set a valuation for your company. There's a price per share and so investors know exactly how much of your company they own when they put their money in. And conversely, you also know how much of the company you still own. And then finally, all the investors get the same price, the same terms, and you have a single closing on the same day. So everybody's entirely clear about what they're getting. That's the basics of preferred shares. There are issues with preferred shares, however, and these issues particularly impact very young companies. Valuation, first of all, uh, it's not unusual for investors and entrepreneurs to disagree on valuation, which can get in the way of doing a deal. And it's especially hard at the idea stage to figure out an appropriate valuation. Preferred shares have a lot of overhead to specify all those terms and to get agreement among all the lawyers. And so from a cost standpoint, you don't want to spend a small equity round entirely or mostly on lawyers. You want to build your company. Also, if you have multiple investors, having the one set of documents means that you have to get 
coordination among those investors, and that can drive up the legal costs as well as delay things. And finally, speaking of delay, even if you have perfect agreement with all your investors, the legal work just takes time. One to two months is not unusual at all, and that can seem like forever to companies that really need cash to move forward. Because of these issues with preferred shares, especially for seed investments, convertible notes were developed. The simple idea is that investors loan money to the company that will be converted to a preferred share offering at a price and with terms to be determined later. And that later is a qualified financing that typically has a minimum dollar amount that has to be achieved before the conversion occurs. In return, the investors get a modest interest rate, 7% is typical, and they get a discount off of the price per share of that future preferred share offering that other investors are going to get. So 15 to 20% discount, meaning typically they're paying 80 to 85% of the price per share that those future investors are paying. So the idea is that with this convertible note, you can have a financing that is fast, inexpensive, and you don't get bogged down with disagreements over valuation. That's the basic idea behind convertible notes. Unfortunately, convertible notes have become more complicated over time, and they haven't always been well executed, so they've become quite controversial with some prominent U.S. venture capitalists. What's the problem? Well, first of all, in very hot markets like Silicon Valley, valuations can go very high, very fast, and so seed investors started putting a cap on the maximum valuation that they'd be willing to pay. So for example, they'd get a 20% discount off the future valuation or $6 million pre-money, whichever is less. That's the way they felt that they could get paid for the risk that they were taking. Then there's the problem of what happens if there is no qualifying investment. So people started putting in automatic conversion to preferred shares at a set price, at specified terms, after a certain period of time, one to two years. Starts to get much more complicated. The alternative, if you don't have that conversion, is that you are technically insolvent, which frankly you already are once you start spending the cash from this debt instrument that is sitting on your balance sheet. And so with caps and floors and auto conversions, suddenly convertible notes aren't as simple anymore, which means they start to get more expensive. And you are actually setting a valuation range, which was one of the reasons you were going to convertible notes in the first place. To make it even worse, some companies in the hot pursuit of seed investors, one investor at a time, they've been writing convertible notes with different caps for different investors. So that means when venture capitalists come along and they look at all of these notes, it makes for a very messy, very expensive series A round and the venture capitalists don't like that at all. And there are more problems with convertible notes, both from the entrepreneurs and the angel investors perspective. Uh, entrepreneurs think it's a good idea to kick the valuation discussion down the road, but Series A investors like to point out that also kicks their realization of the dilution of their ownership down the road. And they argue that's not healthy for entrepreneurs. It's important at every step of the way that entrepreneurs understand how much of the company they own. And of course, that tough discussion about how much they're actually going to own of the company then gets kicked into the laps of the Series A investors. From the angel investors perspective, first of all, if there are 
no caps, then they can find themselves owning much less of the company than they originally anticipated when they put in their seed investment. And these VCs have observed that then makes the angel investors angry and alienated from the company and not supportive in the future. And even when there are caps, uh, sometimes the angel investors actually really don't want to have to pay what the cap actually shows. And again, they will end up owning less than expected and not be supportive of the company. And then finally, the discount that is built into convertible notes can be negotiated away by a VC that's negotiating hard if they are the only alternative around. And that again will be less than the seed investors thought they were going to own and can alienate them for the future. One final point the VCs who don't like convertibles like to point out is that today there are alternatives to convertible notes, particularly series seed term sheets, which are faster and cheaper than the full-blown preferred shares, and they don't have the flaws of convertible notes while they address most of the issues that convertible notes were originally designed to solve. I'm going to talk about some of these alternatives to convertible notes in the next video, so I'd like to conclude this one by helping you answer the question, which investment structure is right for you now, convertible notes or preferred shares? And as I like to do, I'm going to answer that question with four more questions. So first, how much are you trying to raise now? Uh, it's pretty obvious that if you're just trying to raise a small seed amount, then a convertible note or alternatives are a good structure for you. Whereas if you're trying to raise many millions, uh, preferred shares are definitely the way to go. If you're in the middle, uh, first do some research on your marketplace in your target fundraise size and see how many are convertibles versus preferred shares because that break-even point does vary from market to market. And then ask some more questions. Second, uh, how urgent is the need for cash? If you need cash, really need it in the next 60 to 90 days, convertibles or some of the alternatives are really the way to go. Third, how much do you think your valuation is going to increase over the next 12 months? If you think it has a, a possibility of going three to 10 times increase, well, first, check your investment milestones, check comparable companies. And if you still think that's the case, that is going to push you towards a convertible note because the valuation ends up being a big issue. And then finally, uh, consider what your targeted investors want as an investment structure. Uh, not all investors are the same. Some add a lot of value. And if those particular investors really don't want to do convertible notes, then I think that's going to push you towards doing a preferred share offering. It's also worth noting that as you think about convertible notes versus some of the alternatives, I will be talking about what investors know and are comfortable with and what their lawyers and what your lawyer are familiar with is going to drive your decision about convertibles versus some of these new alternatives. At the end of the day, everybody around the table has to be comfortable that the investment structure you use is going to be the basis for a long and successful partnership.